We're going to look at the adjusting journal entries, and this is the accruals worksheet, which means we're only looking at what happens for the accrual journal entries, adjusting journal entries. So accruals was what we look at is cash has not changed hands yet. In other words, this information has not been recorded at all. It doesn't show up on a balance sheet. It doesn't show up on an income statement. It shows up nowhere. And the reason that we have to do these accruals is that we have to make sure that when our revenue has been earned that it is recognized in our books and we have a journal entry for that. We also have to make sure that if we have an expense that's been incurred, that expense is recorded uh, in our journal entries as well so that it will show up in our income statement. And so that's really what we look at is accruing the revenue, accruing the expenses, and just making sure that our revenue and our expenses are recorded that have been incurred or have been um, earned. And so what we look at is the revenue recognition principle. With the revenue recognition principle, that is that when the service has been performed, the revenue has been earned and it needs to be recorded as such. Um, and then the matching principle is what we look at with our expenses and that just means that, and it's also known as the expense recognition principle, uh, that means that when we've incurred that expense it shows up in the month in which it has actually been incurred. And so with looking at it, the first two we're going to look at are revenue items and then the last two are going to be expense items. So two common things that we look at for revenue, we have um, where we have provided a service, but we haven't billed out for that service yet, um, and we haven't received any money for that service yet. So when we look at this, we have income. We have, uh, we have provided a service, and as soon as we provide that service, that means that we have revenue in that particular case. Um, and so in this case, you know, we are looking at, we could look at fees earned as a possible account. Uh, the other possible account would be service revenue. So if we've earned, if we've provided a service, we've earned this money, then it would be revenue. Now, even though we haven't billed for it yet, we still owe that money because we haven't received a payment yet. So someone owes us money And so that is going to be a receivable that we are going to be looking at because we are going to receive that money in the future. We haven't received it yet. So when we have this particular case, what we will have is we will increase our accounts receivable account by that $5,000 and we'll also need to increase our revenue accounts by uh, that $5,000. And so that is what we would be looking at for that particular journal entry is an accounts receivable as the debit, fees earned as our credit account. The other one we look at is interest. Interest is very common to need to be accrued because we don't always pay our interest when it comes due. We may be looking at something like a 90 day note or a year note that we're going to pay the interest and the principal when it matures. But as we've gone through and we've loaned somebody money, they still owe us that interest every month. We're just not receiving it. So we've earned it, but we haven't received it yet. So if you have earned it, that means that you are going to have revenue. The thing I want you to remember is that receivables go with revenue. So you're going to be receiving that in the future, you just haven't received it yet. So when we look at this particular entry, what we're going to see is an interest receivable for that $125. And then you're going to have an interest revenue item for $125. The thing I want you to look at here is that if we look at it, you see interest for both of these. So it's interest receivable, interest revenue, because we are looking at the interest item. 
So those are two common things that we see with revenues. For expenses, we look at wages as a common one and interest expense is another one that we have that's very, very common. So with wages, what we see is that we don't get paid every day. So since we don't get paid every day, when we work a day, that money is owed by the employer. And so here, ABC is paying $10,000 a week in wages. So if we look at that $10,000 for the week, um, and we're going to assume a five-day work week, what we see is that there are $2,000 per day that is out there that we're looking at. So if we have a month, um, let's say we have um, Monday and Tuesday, and so with that, that's the 30th, and this is the 31st, and then, you know, we have Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday is the next month, the first, second, and third. Well, this money for Monday and Tuesday, which is two days, and we'll just call this like March, maybe, those two days are in March. And so we need to make sure that when we do the end journal entry at the end of March, we've accounted for that expense in March. These aren't happening until April, you know? So that's not gonna be an expense until it's paid in April. But these are March, so they need to be expensed in March. And so we are looking at two days. So if we look at $2,000, two days, that's a total of $4,000. So what we see with this particular one, we are looking at wages. And so we owe someone these wages. We have a wage expense because they worked for us and we owe them that. And so we have wage expense in the month of March of 4,000 and we have that wage payable because we're gonna have to pay them still. We haven't paid them yet. So there's a liability whenever they have worked for us. And so we need to make sure that we record that liability and that expense so that we don't overstate our income and we don't understate our liabilities. So we need to make sure we are recording that. And the last one is ABC has accrued $500 in interest expense. So again, there's a note out there and we owe someone money and we haven't paid them the interest yet. We may pay it when the loan comes due. Um, and so in this particular case, what we're going to have is you're going to have that interest expense of that $500 and you owe this money and so that's going to be an interest payable item for that $500 and so that's what we see when we look at this information as far as accruing those things. Again, the thing that I would like for you to look at here is, you know, we have wage expense, we have wage payable. Notice that that beginning is the same. Here we have interest expense, interest payable. So the beginning is the same there as well. Um, one other thing I do want to just kind of briefly look at um, here is how we calculate interest because there may come a time when you need to look at that. And so when you calculate interest, what you're going to do is you're going to take whatever the principal amount is, you're going to multiply that by the interest rate, and then you're going to multiply that by the time. And so this is always one of those things that we kind of look at. The rate itself is a, an annual rate. So that means you're looking at it a year. So if you're given a rate of say, you know, 12%, that's for one year. And so if you have a period that's less than a year, um, then you have to really look at that and try to figure out what you are actually looking at for it. Um, so when we look at this, um, to kind of give you an example, Let's say that we had a $10,000 loan that was paying a 12% interest rate, and we took this loan out on June 1st, and um, it is now December the 31st, and we want to know how much interest has happened during this time period. So when we look at that, we see the principal amount of the note is $10,000. Our interest rate is given to us at 12% and then for time we need to look at how many months we have so we have June July August September October November December and so that is seven months 
And so what I would do for time is I would do 7 over 12, and what that's going to give me is an interest amount of $700. So that's how I would find that. Uh, one of the things I say it's very important that you know how to do is that um, when you're looking at these times, it could be, you know, given to you in the number of days. Now, if you're ever looking at days, days are divided by 360, and that's just kind of assuming 30 days a month. That's what we look at. So if you had 60 days on this note, you would do 360 divided, I mean, 60 divided by 360, and that would give you what you're looking at. You know, if you were looking at 90 day note, it would be 90 divided by 360. That's how you'd find the amount. Um, if you're looking at a monthly amount, we would divide by 12. So for one month, we would be looking at 1 over 12. You know, if you're looking at six months, you know, you're looking at 6 over 12. If you were looking at 10 months, then you're looking at 10 over 12. Other things are quarterly. So quarterly would always be divided by 4. So if you had one quarter, it would be 1 fourth. If you're looking at three quarters, for instance, it would be 3 fourths. So that's how you'd figure out the time. And then semi-annual, if you have something that's semi-annual, you want to then just divide by two because there's two periods. And so really, you're just looking at one half is what you're looking at for a semi-annual period. So I did just want to kind of roughly go over that so you would understand how you do figure out interest and that time period for your interest.